Chainers, wherever you are in the world, this is Sarah Barnes Humphrey with you today. Are you ready? Let's talk supply chain. Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to Thoughts and Coffee. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey. I am the founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain, the blended podcast and founder of the Blended Pledge. And I am coming at you live from Houston, Texas. I am here at the NMFTA user or cybersecurity conference, and we are talking all about security and like companies who have been hacked and what that looks like and how you can prevent it. And uh, I'm learning all sorts of crazy things. Well, today we've got Shannon Hamilton of Blackberry Radar on the show with me. But before we do that, let's hear from our show sponsor. So say you're at work and all the lights flicker and then go out. You try to move and bump into something. You turn and bump into something else. You just can't work like this. You need to be able to see what's happening. Well, this is how your inventory feels. Fastenal has unique inventory solutions that sends data to the cloud and helps you avoid stockouts while not carrying excess inventory. Don't stay in the dark. Let Fastenal shine a light on the parts and supplies that keep your businesses running. Go to fastenal.com forward slash LTSC and see how they do it. All right, let's get into what is new with Let's Talk Supply Chain this week. So we have a brand new episode with Pete from KNNX, formerly DLT Labs. Now, we were talking about blockchain in supply chain. I have not heard blockchain in supply chain in a very long time. We haven't had a lot of companies on the show very recently talking about blockchain. But this discussion was a complete eye opener as to how they're rethinking blockchain in in the supply chain and how it can actually help you and be part of your technology stack to help you improve some inefficiencies in your supply chain. So it's episode 368. Go and check it out wherever you listen to the show or you can head over to let's talk supply chain.com or even our YouTube channel to check it out. And I'd love to hear your feedback. So let us know what you think thought. Now, next, I am going live with a Q&A on Zoom this Thursday about the creative room. Now, you guys have been hearing me talk about the Secret Society of Supply Chain. It's our new membership community. And we've got three membership groups. One is the Supply Chainers full of five, 450 hours of exclusive content. And um, then we've got the Woman in Supply Chain monthly meetup. And we're going to be doing some professional and personal development. And I can't wait to see all of you in there because we're going to launch that in January. And then we've got a third monthly meetup for marketing professionals specifically in supply chain. And it's called the Creative Room. Now, this is where you're going to be able to talk to other marketing professionals. You're also going to be able to talk to potential clients. And we're going to have experts coming in once a quarter as well. But this is your chance to get any of your questions answered if you're thinking about about joining this group. We only have a few spots left. This is launching in January as well. So make sure that you click the registration link in the comments and I will see you on Thursday. All right. What else have we got coming up? We've got no, well, we've, oh, no. Are we okay? We're going to go with this one first. <laughs> Wise Tech, we have a brand new podcast mini series with Wise Tech. Episode one came out last week, and we were talking about going beyond visibility and unveiling the invisible. Now, if you missed this episode, go and check it out. We've got episode two coming out this Thursday, and I believe we're talking about customs compliance and the risks around customs compliance, which is a lot. There are a lot of risks, a lot of things that you need to know, and technology helps you keep on top of those. All right, what's next? All right, we are going live on Friday with Hope White. She's got a brand new episode of No Bullshipping, Where Supply Chain Meets Southern Charm. I can't wait to tune into this one. It's at 10 a.m. Eastern. Remember to click the attend button even if you cannot show up live, because I will send you the link to go and check out the recording. And then I think the next one, yes, we are going live next week. Now we're talking about AI powered supply chains with X Esker, and we're talking about how you can use that to drive customer experience. Now we all know 
Customer experience means return customers. And supply chains have a really, really big hand in that. And so cannot wait to see you there. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Click the attend button and I'll send you the recording. Now we have a brand new episode of Blended, leveling the playing field, what women, women have to think about versus men. Now this is a really great episode and we've been getting some amazing feedback. People are resharing this episode all over the place and a lot of people are coming to us and commenting about what they have had to think about, some of the things that we didn't actually talk about in this episode. Um, but go and check it out. We had some fun with this one. We also got very serious uh, with some of the topics here. So go and check that out wherever you listen to the Blended podcast. You can also find it on the Let's Talk Supply Chain playlist. All right, now it's time to bring up our guest. So, Shannon, good morning. How are you? I'm great, Sarah. How are you? Good. I think I've been talking too much. I've got... <laughs> I seem to have to clear my throat or maybe I just need a little bit more coffee. So where in the world are you today? I am uh, I'm actually at a user conference for one of our partners and I'm about an hour and a half outside of Montreal, Canada. Nice. Very, very nice. So we're both not in our usual habitat. So why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do? Thanks, Sarah. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Shannon Hamilton. I, I lead growth and adoption, or as some folks like to say, sales for, for BlackBerry Radar. Amazing. And we just saw each other at IANA Expo, which was a really great show. And you were on stage. What did you talk about? Yeah, that was a great opportunity and a great show. Um, I actually had the opportunity to talk about, you know, some critical event data that our technology is driving and how it's helping those intermodal companies that are operating in and out of railroads, uh, rail yards, pardon me, uh, get better visibility, uh, learn about how, you know, when chassis and containers are loaded and unloaded, uh, how can you benefit from that information and improve some of the data quality for organizations that operate in that space. Amazing. And we're going to be talking all about asset tracking today, which is, you know, not something we typically talk about all the time in supply chain. Um, we, I also saw you uh, in Chicago at Inland as well. And so this is becoming such a hot topic. It's something that people are really looking into um, to protect themselves, to protect their business, to protect their customers' cargo as well. And we're going to get a little bit more into that, and I'm excited to share that with the audience. Now, let's bring up the poll, because this is a question that you um, actually shared with us. And so the question that we asked, what is the estimated time frame for seeing a return on investment? And it looks like I can't see the results. So just give me one second. I am going to pull it up. Why did you ask this question of our audience, Shannon? It's an important question. It comes up in almost every conversation. And I think it actually spans probably every technology. Um, it, it's how quickly or how easily are you going to actually be able to see uh, you know, positive results based on the investment that you're making? Um, and there's a lot of technologies that might claim to, to have strong ROI. Um, and for us, um, you know, we, we have a very uh, rigorous uh, pilot or a proof of concept process. And we can help customers see ROI in as little as four to six weeks. And um, we've had you know, many customers actually share that you know, they've had less dry runs, they're making better use of their employees' time, uh, doing less manual yard checks, they're improving data as it relates to billing, uh, lots of examples. I, I think, uh, you know, first, the first step is understanding what you don't know and, and using the technology to improve your visibility. And then from there, um, you know, look, look for a real tangible ROI very quickly. Um, and we've got lots of examples. So interested to see what the poll showed. Yeah, so I'm pulling it up now. So 61% said 180 plus days, 26% said 90 to 180 days, 7% said zero to 90 days as well. Is this surprising to you? Like we had almost 300 votes on this. And I'm just wondering how these results compare to what you're seeing in the market. 
I think most organizations are looking for payback in, in that first year. Uh, I think that's fair. So it's actually nice to see that um, people are looking for more aggressive payback in that, you know, six month time frame. Um, and what I'd like to, you know, maybe illuminate a little bit more is that, you know, that zero to 90 day time frame, um, I, I think, you know, actually could be higher. Um, mm -hmm. Utilizing the technology again in that proof of concept way where you're actually taking real life and yeah. using the technology, even if it's in a small sample size, is really going to help you quickly see where that ROI can come from. So I'm going to challenge the listeners, Sarah, to uh, you know push the technology providers to do more in that, uh, let's call it zero to 180 day space. Yeah, because we should really be there. Now, we had a lot of people comment on that, and they said it was project scope dependent. Mm -hmm. But I think, and then also depends on the business case. Um, it needs to be a decision tree to determine scope and associated ROI. So what do you think about that? Because I also think that um, you're saying we need to push them, you know, for that ROI to be a little bit smaller. Uh, less than 180 plus days, especially when you're implementing technology. And the other interesting thing is when I talk about ROI with um, people in the industry, a lot of times we focus on what that dollar amount is, but really ROI shows up in a variety of different ways. It shows up in operational efficiency. It shows up in dollars. It shows up in time, right? There's so many different components to what an ROI actually is to a client. Absolutely. And it can show up in a lot of different ways. One of the things that we encourage our, our prospective customers to do is really start with a cross-functional team. Um, usually the idea to track assets starts perhaps out of uh, fleet management or, um, you know, the logistics team, but there's actually benefit to the customer success part of the organization, finance, even IT, if they're looking to integrate data uh, that's coming off of the devices. So really successful um, pilots and ROI come from making sure you've got a good cross-functional team um, mm -hmm. because the data can be used in a lot of different ways, but the, you know, the breadth of it really comes from having the right subject matter experts around the table. It's true. And somebody just said ROI return also depends on the organization's ability to implement. That is so true. <laughs> that is such a great point. I'm so glad that uh, they brought that up. It says LinkedIn user, so I can't actually say, see who it is. Um, now, before we go to our first article, why don't you give us a bit of a market update? You know, what is happening in your space of supply chain? What are some of the questions that your clients are maybe asking themselves? What are they thinking about? Mm -hmm. So BlackBerry Radar, we focus in non-powered asset tracking. So what does that mean? Chassis, containers, trailers. Um, and the industry right now is, is at a point where there's a lot of excess capacity. Um, we know coming out of COVID that assets were really hard to come by. Um, and now there, there's a lot of um, underutilized assets that are, that are sitting um, all over the, the country, all over North America and even the globe. Um, so decisions right now are, are, you know, the landscape is looking at technology. It's a good time to look at technology when things are a little yeah. bit slow. Um, ROI is a big focus on conversation because, you know, dollars are, are scarce or, or being, um, you know, um, highly sought after. So lots of different project opportunities in front of uh, our prospective customers. But, you know, something I think we'll talk about maybe as it relates to the conference that you're at is if you don't have digital visibility to your physical assets, it's really hard to make good data driven decisions. Um, and so it's really right now kind of balancing investment return on um, investment, the return on investment. And, you know, while things are slow, capturing these assets can be hard. So this is a really good time to to think about, you know, investing in asset tracking because you can find the, the time to physically install them. Yeah. And I think also a lot of companies are looking to cut costs, mm -hmm. right? They're looking to find ways of utilizing that technology to create also efficiency and things as well. And so I think it's a really great time to be able to look at that. Um, we are going to talk about cybersecurity in a little bit because that is top of mind for a lot of people. And if it's not, it should be based on some of the conversations I am having here. Um, but one of the interesting things that also came up out of a case study that you guys did, and we're going to go to that first article, 
is about cargo theft. Mm -hmm. And especially right now, cargo theft can be a, a really big ongoing problem when it comes to trucking, when it comes to moving goods. I mean, it's always been an issue. I remember when I was in logistics, it was something that we dealt with, right? You have theft from a warehouse, you have theft during transit, whether it's ocean freight or air freight, you have theft at the origin. Um, but I think what we're seeing more and more domestically is in the trucking space as well. And you guys have a really great case study with XTL, who's a company out of Canada. And it was a constant problem for them. And it was in the Montreal region, which is interesting that you're just outside of Montreal today. And it's also especially a challenge at uh, the holidays, which they were talking about. And I think they had two thefts in two weeks, which is crazy because I think the trailer alone is about $50,000. And then depending on the value of the product inside that that trailer, um, and they have some really big named customers. So not only are they losing out, but their customer is losing out. Plus, they're probably not going to be able to hit deadlines because the cargo is gone. And they they needed that probably for deadlines or at least customer orders, which is going to impact that customer experience, which I was talking about earlier. So it's kind of a domino effect and something that's really prominent that we need to take a look at. And we need to think about so talk to us about this case study and how you worked with XTL. Yeah, this is a great case study because, you know, it, and even if I think about these economic times, it seems like when financial, you know, we have a bit of a financial crisis or quote unquote a recession, more bad actors come out, right? People are, are looking to do things um, that are that are devious. And um, in working with XTL, you know, they were using a number of different ways uh, closed circuit TV, video monitoring, different different solutions to try to uh, keep on top of theft. The, the challenge with some of those and in with XTL specifically was, um, you know, you need somebody monitoring a lot of that information mm. almost in real time to be able to capture the events. So uh, BlackBerry Radar's technology, what makes us unique is we, we are an event driven solution. What does that mean? We're really focused on surfacing the event itself and, and sending that to the cloud through our software so that people can respond to it right away. So what does that look like? In the case of cargo theft, um, door open, door closed. Um, knowing if your um, asset, and in this case with XTL, looking at specific geofence locations. Is, is my trailer where it's supposed to be when, uh, based on what I expect to be happening? Mm -hmm. uh, we can create alerts and triggers when uh, those trailers aren't where they're supposed to be. And if the door is open specifically in a location that's unauthorized. Um, so knowing that uh, almost immediately and having that event, that exception scenario directed to the right personnel means you can respond really quickly, mm -hmm. work with the authorities, do some validation. Um, and also tamper alert. We, you know, we can install our devices. We don't need direct light to sun. We're not a wired solution. We're a self-contained battery operated solution, which means we can be installed in a lot of, I call it stealthy places to try to avoid theft. Mm -hmm. uh, but if anybody tries to tamper with that device, we've got some uh, technology in there that also creates an alert. So you can really um, get some early warning detection um, if something is, is going awry. Mm, I don't know. I had this <laughs> picture come up in my head that we need the device where something comes out of it with something to hit them on the hands when they try to move it. <laughs> Don't anyway, do that. Maybe later on in the future. Um, so I, I'm glad that you brought that up because the fact that they tried CCTV, high visibility areas that were lighted up, um, as well as locks. I mean, I think that's where most people will go first is, you know, those are my options. Those are probably the most economical options maybe to try out first. But at the end of the day, if you're going to go spend money on that, you might as well take a look at the asset tracking option as well, because like you said, they don't actually work as well and you're going to spend money on it anyways. Another thing that came up in the article was about false alarms. Can you talk to us about that? Because apparently that was a challenge for them, but you worked with them to, to uh, figure that out. Yeah, I think it's all about early detection. Um, and, and again, if you have assets in specific locations um, and you, you might you might think that something is, is going wrong, um, but the added technology of door open, door closed or the tampler alert 
we're actually collecting different data points that you can use together to help eliminate those false, you know, false readings. Um, and, you know, in, in a lot of cases, what we hear from customers is I'd rather know a little bit more often that something looks fishy so that I can yeah. respond to it than find out about it when it's too late. So mm -hmm. I think it's about, you know, understanding the organization, what they expect to have happen, where they expect their assets to go. And then mm -hmm. there's a lot of configuration that we can work with them on in the software yeah. to make sure that they're minimizing those those exceptions. Well, and that was the example that they used was that they needed to know whether it was actually leaving the yard or not. So I think it was a speed factor where you were able to let them know if it went over 50 miles per hour or something like that, which let them know that, that obviously the trailer was not it was where it was supposed to be and it was absolutely moving. But you bring up a, a good point because even at the cybersecurity conference, they're talking about that as well. You know, how many times is it you know, that you want to know that something is going wrong. Well, it's every time and it could be a false alarm, but you need to call every time you need to verify, you need to check that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit. All right, let's get to our second article. So this is a blog that uh, you guys wrote on your website about how asset tracking software is improving transportation and logistics. Now, it goes through a variety of different benefits of how it is working to improve the industry. We've talked a little bit about that during the um, case study, but some of the top things that are listed in this article are real-time visibility, cargo utilization, which I thought was interesting, uh, preventing loss, which we just talked about, reducing costs while maximizing fuel, which I do want to circle back to, and identifying trends, and the last one, dwell and detention. Now, talk to me about the dwell and detention. Detention has been a topic that is top of mind for everybody pretty much since the pandemic. Yeah, dwell, um, dwell and detention are actually um, a, a, almost one of the, the, the most key topics right now that we're talking to customers and prospects about. So why is that? So dwell is how much time are assets spending in your own yard or in your own facilities. Um, and then detention, you know, the way that we look at it is how much time are your assets spending in, let's say, customers' locations or assets or sorry, locations that are not your own. So that's how we kind of de define those two scenarios. Um, utilizing assets more effectively, uh, so driving up your utilization rate means that you need to be turning those assets uh, faster. And so you want them sitting less in your own yard so that you can um, you know, be driving more revenue or reducing costs, uh, potentially making decisions to not purchase as many assets. Um, we've seen customers who have um, offset millions of dollars in their capital budgets to not purchase more assets because with the visibility, they've been able to utilize their own equipment more effectively. Mm. Um, you know, we hear a lot for, from transportation companies who have, let's say, trailers that they're dropping at customer facilities. Maybe they're being used as temporary storage, you know, instead of actually being uh, offloaded in, in, let's say, three days on average. So we can set um, parameters to say, what does um, good dwell and detention look like for your organization? And again, the event-driven nature of the technology means we're going to create alerts and reports when those thresholds have been exceeded. Um, so you could, you know, set more of an aspirational goal and know how you're working towards that. Um, you know, it really depends on, on, you know, the operations of your, of your business, but um, it's costing money or you're losing revenue uh, depending on which end of the spectrum you look at. So in this economy, it's, it's a very um, important topic. Yeah, we don't want either of those right now. Two of the other ones, one is maximizing cargo capacity and one is maximizing fuel. Can you talk a little bit about those as well? Because I thought those were pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So we have some wireless sensors that go along with our, our asset tracking solution. So first off, our solution is, is beyond uh, location. It's, it's a gateway. So it connects to wireless sensors. Um, and we've got some uh, two different options for reading cargo and cargo utilization. So again, it's about operational efficiency. It's knowing an either cube percentage or linear feet, how much space do you have in your trailer or container that you could be um, using more effectively. Uh, when it comes to fuel, 
you know, we can help customers drive reports uh, around empty miles, look at backhaul. How do you take advantage of some of the situations where, you know, trailers might be doing their deliveries, but coming back empty um, and cargo utilization um, and the percentage of cargo uh, for specific lanes and destinations. All of that data helps you drive better decisions, um, look for more business, partner with others, or even if you know it's deliveries to from distributions, distribution centers to stores, um, you know internally you can look at all of those metrics to um, fine tune your business. Absolutely. Now the LinkedIn user, if they could let us know who they are, because I'd love to get Shannon in, uh, in contact. This data would be great to have put against the terminal and depot fee structures so you can derive an exact dollar figure. What do you think about that? Uh, I think they're spot on. Um, you, you know, I, I also um, have heard scenarios to go in beyond that. Um, container mounted and, and uh, not mounted within the terminals can also drive billing. So how many times are, are containers getting moved around on chassis in, in a mm -hmm. yard? Um, all of these events, um, I, when, when lined up properly with other systems in your organization are going to help improve data quality, probably point out some opportunities for cost savings. But more importantly, you know, in a lot of these situations, and I think the LinkedIn viewer was mentioning, you're relying on data from third parties mm -hmm. um, that are kind of driving the cost that you are being told you should, let's say, pay. Uh, what about gaining access to that data directly yourself so that you've got information that you can at least put side by side to, to you know, quality check um, any of those invoices or, or billing situations? Yeah, such a great point. It's Don Miller. So Shannon, we're going to have to connect you with Don Miller so that you can talk more about this with them. All right. Our last article. So this was uh, written by Supply and Demand Chain about how digital transformation and asset tracking can mitigate risks. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to talk about this article is that they have a different perspective on the di the digital transformation and what it actually means to supply chain. It's kind of a different definition than what we've been talking about. So it says, inserting digital capabilities into everything from customer service to cross collaboration and decision making. And obviously with supply chain, there's so many different facets to it, right? From sourcing all the way to last mile delivery and you know, customer service in between. I talk about how there needs to be internal collaboration and there needs to be a lot of internal cap collaboration when it comes to digital transformation, not just external, but obviously that internal collaboration. What they talk about is that the option of using asset tracking uh, improves costs from 15 to 35 percent. Now, we've been talking about reducing costs in a variety of different ways. This actually puts it into perspective as to a percentage of what you can put onto that cost savings. Now, talk to me a little bit about this article. What did you think? Um, you know what? I think it raises some really good points, um, specifically around data-driven decisions and you know, the use of AI, machine learning, you had Pete Gowan lock on talking about blockchain. Mm -hmm. These are all really, you know, impressive technologies. Um, but you need to first, you know, have a digital twin, you need to digitize your physical assets. And I think, you know, if, if you're um, on a crawl, walk, run journey mm -hmm. to digitize and, and, and innovate your supply chain or your logistics operation, um, people, I see people diving into AI and machine learning because that's the thing that's maybe most interesting and is getting a lot of press right now. Um, but they're missing sort of some of the foundational pieces, which are, you know, investing right now in the physical technology that's going to give you the digital twin, the digital tracking mm -hmm. of your physical assets that then you can use to apply some of these higher level technologies. Um, so it, it, you need both. Um, and, and I think it raises a really good point. I've not quite seen the high 35% return on investment just yet. Um, I, I would be very comfortable in saying, you know, 20% is very attainable. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it just goes to show that there is, you know, lots of room for yeah. uh, improvement in our businesses when we, when we utilize the right technology. And really quickly, because we're coming to the end, how do you guys think about cybersecurity? Because one of the biggest things from this conference is that you got to partner with the right people who are secure. 
it's in Blackberry's DNA. It's the, the thing that we've been known about for 30 plus years. Um, it's embedded in our technology and IoT devices, which asset tracking devices are, are connected mm -hmm. to the internet, not just for us, but for the entire industry. So security should be top of mind. These are you know points of potential compromise. It's an area of expertise of ours. And I think you know we should be talking about it a lot more, Sarah. It's way more. All right, let's let everybody know where I am going to be and what we've got coming up real quick. So obviously I'm at the Digital Solutions Conference. Today is our thoughts and coffee. We've got Esker LinkedIn Live next week, November 1st. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And then I'm going to be in San Francisco for the Bloom User Conference. And if you have not applied, you definitely want to apply to be there. And in November, uh, the next week after that, sorry, November 3rd, 14th and 15th, I'm going to be at the Woman in Supply Chain Conference. And then we're going to be in Manifest in February. So thank you so much to everybody who tuned in today for Thoughts and Coffee. Shannon, thank you so much for joining me. See you at Manifest. See ya.